Good morning, and welcome to worship with First UMC Santa Monica. It is a joy to be in community with you on this beautiful summer day. As we get started, be sure to take a moment to reach out and say hello on the comment wall and share the peace of Christ with one another in your homes and online. A special welcome to those who are joining us for the first time. We are so grateful that you're here with us this morning. If you would like information about getting connected, there is a sign-in link in the description of this video. We'd love to hear from you. As we move into this time of worship and prayer, we give thanks for this day and for all of the ways that God is at work among us. As the prelude begins, let us turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God. join together in the call to worship. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain our ministries together. Give us patience, courage, and wisdom so to care for one another and challenge one another that together we may follow Jesus Christ, living together in love, and offering our gifts and talents in your service. We take time to celebrate our mission and common life together. We enjoyed celebrating Summerfest here yesterday. It was a fun event for all ages and a chance for people to see one another. We want to say a big thank you to our event team of Jamie and Sandra Jones, 
along with Dot and Emily Plukas. Church on the Lawn has provided a meaningful way for us to worship outdoors this summer. Join us for our last one on July 25th at 5 p.m. Prior to Church on the Lawn, Trisha will lead a short Bible study on Zoom called Visio Divina at 7.30 a.m. this Wednesday, July 21st. It will be a time of guided visual meditation and prayer through scripture and art. If you're looking for a quiet place for prayer and reflection this summer, or just missing this sanctuary space, each Wednesday from 12 noon to 2 p.m., the sanctuary is open. We know this sacred space holds a special place in our hearts, and we offer this as a way of nurturing our faith. Lastly, we invite everyone to Zoom coffee hour at 11 a.m. Come say hi and spend some time in community after worship today. Let us know if you need help finding ways to participate. We're here because of you. And if you're having any technical difficulties, just call the church office during the week. Details about all of these opportunities are in the online order of worship and are also on the welcome page of our website. We thank God for these opportunities for fellowship, for worship, and for service. Thanks be to God. In this morning's gospel lesson, we read and listen for three important messages that are appropriate for our times. They are about getting rest, turning to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, for guidance, and that we should expect a miracle in our own lives. I read from the book of Mark, chapter 6, 30 through 34, and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It seems that Jesus is always teaching, preaching, and healing, even when we don't notice. In the passage Ron reads for us today, those first disciples had gathered round. He had wanted to bring them back together, to be with them, to listen to them, to hear from them about the, all that they had been experiencing out in the mission field where they were doing the work of the kingdom. I'm sure that the things they recounted varied. Some were surely elated by marvelous experiences, positive encounters, new life springing forth. Some were no doubt dejected having had a door or two slammed in their face, or a feeling that they'd not been able to get through to someone despite their best efforts. Some were convinced of the importance of their work. Some perhaps were doubting, 
wondering why they had left work and family behind to pursue a dream that seemed elusive. Some were just plain tired, and some were tired of it all. Jesus wanted to hear all this from them, and he wanted them to hear one another. He wanted to receive all that they had to share in a spirit of compassion and understanding. In this listening and receiving, he was offering them healing. And he wanted to teach them how to do the same for one another, knowing that's not always easy for us when our experiences differ, when our needs <clears throat> differ, when our perspective about what's going on or what should come next differs. As he offered compassion to them, he modeled how they might show compassion to themselves and to one another. It seems to me that this speaks to us quite directly now in these days and weeks and months of living into a new chapter of life as we continue to assess COVID's impact on us and on how we are to live together now. Our feelings and reactions are not all alike, even within ourselves. We can feel happy and confident and raring to go, and we can feel hesitant and uncertain. We can feel great without a mask, and we can feel hesitant and uncertain. We can reach out for a hug, and we can draw back out of caution. We have different notions of safe behaviors and safe practices. Parents are sorting out what's best for their unvaccinated children. And we're all keeping an eye on the virus variants and how rising numbers of COVID cases might cause us to take a step back and revise our plans. These are not easy times for any of us. It's not always easy to navigate our way through our differences with one another. And I suspect that we'll be in this phase of reorientation, adaptation, and adjustment for a while. The advice we get from health experts can change as we continue to learn more about this virus. There are still a lot of unknowns, Dr. Barbara Ferrer, director of the LA County Department of Public Health recently stated. She went on to stress that it's incumbent upon us all to look out for one another, to do all we can to keep ourselves and others safe. She said, we've gotten through this pandemic by taking care of each other. We need to continue to take care of each other. That bottom line fits right in with what Jesus is teaching his own disciples in today's story. Listen, be patient, stay flexible and tolerant of your differences. Love one another and love your neighbor as yourself. In addition to teaching them, Jesus wants them to heal. And that means to take a step back, get some distance, and get some rest. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves, he said to them, and rest a while. Well, you heard the story. <laughs> that while didn't last very long, did it? Hungry for their presence, their words, their healing ministries, a great crowd followed them, wanting more. And Jesus had compassion on them, too, that great crowd of hurting, hungry people. He saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. And our good shepherd had compassion on them all. All well and good, you may be thinking while still asking yourself, what about that rest Jesus had offered his own disciples? Things don't seem to come to pass quite as Jesus intended. As the old saying goes, life is what happens 
while you're making other plans. Jesus seems to shift and go with what is clearly needed in the moment. Instead of the week-long spiritual retreat he might have had in mind, they carry on with the work of ministry. I'm hoping that the disciples found some renewal, if not a lot of rest per se, simply by being together, by sharing stories, and knowing that they were not alone. I hope they found rest in Jesus' assurance that he was with them and that he loved them and that he would always find ways to care for them. I hope that we can find ways to offer that same compassionate presence, listening ear, listening heart to those around us in these days. So many are exhausted from the pressures and pace of this past 16 months. Teachers, parents, students, kids, healthcare workers, counselors, business people trying to balance work with home and family care. Through these months of living with a pandemic, we have all been doing a lot of extra emotional, mental, and spiritual work and are probably more drained than we even realize. I hope that we can all find rest and renewal these days in a few quiet moments in God's presence, moments of silence and prayer, moments to draw near to the creating spirit of God and find new life for our hearts and souls, moments in worship, quiet time in the sanctuary, solace and beauty in nature. And let's find ways to listen to one another's stories and to share one another's load, and in so doing, to provide moments for rest and renewal. My hunch is that just as Jesus and those first disciples discovered so poignantly that day, there will still always be people showing up in need of healing and care? How do we stay open to folks from the larger community who show up knocking, asking, requesting? How will we stay attentive to unexpected needs that may arise? How do we stay centered ourselves so as to be able to respond with compassion in the manner of Jesus. We cannot know with certainty now just what the few next few months will hold for us, for our families, for our congregation. We may have to pivot and launch into something we hadn't intended or foreseen, just as Jesus did that day long ago. Fortunately, one thing this pandemic has taught us is perseverance, requiring of us flexibility and resilience. And through it all comes the unending refrain of the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Love through God's creating spirit that is and always will be with us gathering us in, opening our hearts, listening to our stories, inviting us to rest, teaching and healing and renewing us, and sending us out again and again to a world in need of that love and amazing grace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we take time to pray together in community. If you are joining us online, you may lift up your prayers in the comment section, or you can share them with our prayer group through the link provided. Let us be in prayer. Gracious God, we receive the blessings offered by your steadfast love, and we give thanks that we are fed and nurtured by your grace. We pray that through your spirit, we might be the same source of love and comfort to our neighbors. We pray for wisdom and courage for local, national, and global leaders so that they enact in every nation for the common good, the justice you command. We pray especially for our friends in Haiti and for a path forward in peace and justice. We trust that you hear each of our prayers, whether spoken aloud or in our hearts, Today, we lift up prayers for comfort and assurance for Paul and Marilyn Leone. And we bless this prayer quilt as we join in prayer for Kimberly Roeder. Together, we pray to you, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With gratitude in our hearts, we set aside time and worship for the offering of our gifts. Your generosity gives thanks to God and makes a difference in many, many lives. To give one example, your giving supports the weekly organizing and maintaining of our pop-up library, which is a continual gift we offer to our community. We encourage you to stop by to take a book, donate a book, or share a moment with a friend. We thank you for your gifts to support the work of the church. You can mail your donation to the church or drop it off at our office any day of the week. You will find a link to our secure giving page in the description of this video. Through this act of faith, may the Spirit of God touch our hearts and lives as we give thanks through Jesus Christ. Draw
Please join together in the unison prayer of dedication. Almighty God, you still call us into your service. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Equip us all with a spirit of willingness that we, with courage, can witness about you by the profession of our words and through living our way and through our way of living. Grant us all to partake in your strength and joy so that we can enter into the anxiety and suffering of the world to make alive that hope which Christ gives. All this we pray in Christ's name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds safe in the love and the knowledge of God. And may God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, bless, preserve, and keep you from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>